Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with lesson number 31 on using your Raspberry Pi microcontroller. Uh, what we're going to do in this lesson is we are going to create a dimmable LED. The reason I like this project is it requires you to utilize the skills that you learned in many of the earlier lessons. Remember in the last few lessons we've been learning how to interact and control our interact with and control our GPIO pins. Well, what we're going to do this time is let me show you, tell you the objective of the circuit in the lesson, and then we'll see all the different skills that we're going to have to exercise. Basically, we're going to have two LEDs and two push buttons. This is similar to the circuit, or it's the same circuit that we used in, in, in lesson number 30. But what our, what our objective is today is, is that this button will be the dim button, and this button will be the bright button. So every time I press the dim button, I want the LEDs to become dimmer. Every time that I press the bright button, I want the LEDs to become brighter. Uh, now, what i got to be careful of is i got to make sure that I keep the ranges that are applied such that the program doesn't crash, but I want to sort of go all the way down to where it's off and then come all the way back up to where it is full brightness. Okay, so same circuit as last time. We are using pin 6 as the ground. You see I create a rail here, a ground rail. Then we are using pin uh, 8, 10, 12 as the left leg of the button. Pin 16 is the left leg of the other button. And then 18 to control this resistor and 22, or to control this LED and 22 to control this LED. All right, and then you can see that we have everything coming into a common ground, which jumps over to the Pi. Okay, so what is this going to take? We're going to have to set up these pins as GPIO inputs, GPIO.in. We are going to have to set these up as GPIO.out. And then also we're going to have to activate PWM on these two LEDs so that we can get brightness and dimness. So we're bringing together everything that we learned in the last four or five lessons. So let's just get, let's just jump right in and see if we can start developing some code. Go ahead and build your circuit, and I give you a link on toptechboy.com where you can buy the gear if you still, uh, if you still need this kit to follow along with, uh, with our lessons. Toptechboy.com lesson 31 and lesson 31. You go to Raspberry Pi with Linux lesson. Go down, go down to lesson 31. Click on it, and then you come over here, and you can get this hooked up. But we are now moving on going to our Linux, our old friend, the Linux terminal window, the command line. We are running this Pi from the command line. We're going to create a program called uh, DIM. All right. If I look where I am, you can see that earlier we created a directory called MyPython. I'm going to go down in that because then I will not have to keep typing in the path names. And now I'm going to do a nano and I'm going to create DIM. Dot .py. I always put dot .py on my Python programs. That way they're all organized. If I ever want to find all my programs, I just type, you know, a find with a star dot .py and I can find, you know, I can act on all of my Python programs at the same time. So here we go. Looky there. All right. We are now ready to start writing some code. So you can imagine that we're probably going to want to put some delays in here. So we're going to import time. So we're going to say from time import sleep. Okay. If you just say import time, then to do a sleep, you've got to do time.sleep and then what you want to sleep. If you, imp if you from time import sleep, then the command just becomes sleep and then open close parentheses in there how many seconds you want to rest. A little tip there. Okay, we're going to need to work with our GPIO pin, so we're going to need to import capital R, capital P, little i, dot GPIO as, as GPIO. All right, capitalization matters. You've got to get your capitalization exactly. Okay, now button, uh, and then we got to do a, a, a we got to tell it what pin configuration we want to use. So we're going to say GPIO dot uh, set mode. So which mode are we going to use? GPIO dot, I like the physical pin, physical pin configuration, the numbering system, the numbering scheme. What's the word that I use here? Board, B-O-A-R-D. 
and then you just use the straight physical pins. It's the easiest way to do it. I like to assign variables to my pins that are intuitive, and that way it's easy to keep track of things because I'll forget what's hooked up where. So I'm going to remember that button 1 was hooked to pin 16. Button 2 was hooked to pin 12. LED 1 was hooked to pin 22, and LED 2 was hooked to pin 18. Okay, now I need to go in and I need to now set up my pins. <clears throat> so we're going to do for gpio.setup. And what do I need to set up? I need to set up button one. What is it? It's a gpio.in. It's an input. And then we I got to activate that pull up resistor. Remember that pull up resistor that's on the board? I got to activate it. And so I'm going to go pull up down is equal to pull up device is equal to I'm sorry gpio dot pull up device underscore up okay so I'm saying make the pull up resistor or activate the pull up resistor so the pull up down is equal to gpio pull up device make it an up okay so we're going with up now we go gpio dot set up what do we need to set up the other button button Two. It is a GPIO. It's an input. It's a pull up down equal GPIO dot pull up device up. <clears throat> my buttons are now set up. Now I need to set up my LEDs. So I go GPIO dot set up. Which LED? LED one. You see, these normally would be pin numbers, but I can put variables in. All right, so I'm going to go GPIO dot out. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to go GPIO dot setup, and then I have LED two, GPIO dot out. All right, so now my buttons are set up with inputs with pull-up resistors. My uh, LEDs are set up as outputs. Now, we, want, we don't want to just turn the LEDs on and off. We did that before. What we want to do is we want to be able to dim them, be able to control exactly, get a little mood lighting going in here, okay? So how, what do I have to do? I've got to turn on, I've got to activate the PWM. So I've got to create a PWM object for the first LED. So PWM1, I've got to create the object. It's going to be equal to gpio.pwm. And then I'm going to assign that to LED 1. And then i got to give it a frequency. I'm going to say 1,000 hertz. Okay. And then PWM2 is going to be GPIO.PWM. And then that's going to be LED2, 1,000. And so I created a PWM object associated with LED1, which is on pin 22. And I created a PWM object associated with LED2, which is pin 18. Now i got to fire those things up. So I'm going to say PWM1.start. And I've got to give it an initial duty cycle. Well, initially, I want the LEDs off. So I'll put a 0% duty cycle, PWM2.start is going to be a 0% duty cycle. Okay, so I've got that. Now I've got to tell it an initial brightness. <clears throat> I'll start with a brightness of equal to 1, which is just barely on. Okay, now I've got a loop, and I've just got a loop forever looking for someone to mash these buttons. So how do we loop forever while 1 is always 1? So while 1. Now what do I need to do? I need to look and see, has anybody pressed button number 1? So I say if gpio.input I'm reading from gpio.input is reading from the uh, gpio which one button one okay so I'm making a gpio read on button one by doing gpio.input button one now if that is equal equal remember for conditionals you always use two equals if that's equal to zero that means the button was pressed that means the button was pressed because when you press the button, that takes this thing, the pin, right straight to ground. And so it just sees the ground. So if gpio.input of button 1 is equal to 0, that means the button was pressed. So let's notify the user. Print but 
button one was pressed. Okay. Why do I put this? This helps debugging. Like if I press the button and if the light doesn't come on, I should at least see this thing print out and know that I got into this if statement. What do I want to do with this left button? That left button makes things dimmer. So I need to say bright is equal to bright divided by 2. Why do I say divided by 2 instead of like minus 2? The thing is, the way that your eye perceives changes in brightness, it it perceives it exponentially. And so if I just linearly change the brightness, my eye is not even going to perceive it. I'm going to boom, 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 boom. And I'm, my eye is not going to perceive the change. But if I do it exponentially, multiplicatively, then I'll see a nice linear, I will perceive a nice linear increase in brightness. So if I change it exponentially, I will perceive it smoothly and linearly. Pl play around with it the other way if you don't believe me. Okay, and we've got to divide, we've got to do a, a two point. Because if I said one divided by two, and those were both integers, one divided by two integer math would be zero. And once brightness goes to zero, I could never turn it back up because on the other side of the if statement where I'm doing times two, it just, you can never time zero out of zero. You know, you can times two on zero all day long. It's going to say zero. So I can't let bright go to zero. So I just have to divide it by two. And that way, if I say one divided by two point, that would be 0.5. It's not going to go to zero. It's going to do floating point math. Hope that makes sense. Now, what do I want to do? I've made the brightness half as much. I've got to apply that. So I do PWM1 is equal to, uh, or PWM1, the command I want to give is change duty cycle. And what do I change it to? Bright. Okay. So I made bright half as big, and now I basically make the duty cycle half as much because I apply bright. I need to do that to both LEDs, so I'll see PWM2 dot change duty cycle, and I'll do that bright as well. Okay, and then I need to pause. I'm going to go about 0.25 seconds on this. That way it will kind of be snappy. If I just hold the button down, every two quarter second will come through again and kind of go down and go back up. So that looks good. All right, what's the other thing that I might have? I might, I got to look at the other pin. Did somebody press the other button, GPIO? Dot, how do I see if the other button is pressed? I do an input, and then which button do I look at? Button 2. And what do I want to see? If it's equal equals 0, that means it was pressed. And what do I want to do? Print. Button 2 was pressed. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> what do I want this time? Brightness, if they press button 2, I want it to get brighter. What do I do? Bright. You got it. Times 2. All right. Okay. What you see, though, is, is that on this duty cycle, the duty cycle has to be between, on the PWM2 change duty cycle, that can only be between 0 and 100. And so I can't just timesing 2 and apply a number greater than 100. The program would crash. So I've got to kind of pin it down there. And I got to say if bright is equal to if bright is greater if bright is greater than 100, then what do I want to do if brightness is greater than 100? Well, I want to say that bright is equal to 100. So if I get to 64 and then I multiply by 2 and it goes to 128, then it's going to bring it back to 100 so that the program doesn't crash. And then I should also probably notify the user. I should say, you are at full bright, like that, okay? Now, now that I've done that bookkeeping, what I need to do is I need to PWM1, I need to change the duty cycle. And what I'm doing here is now I'm applying that bright. So bright is now twice as big. I need to apply it to the duty cycle, making the duty cycle twice as much. So bright, and then PWM2 is change duty cycle, and I make that bright. So both of these LEDs I'm going to bring up and down in tandem, B-R-I-G-H-T. Okay, and then what I want to do next is I have got to, uh, I think, you know what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, I'm going to let them know what the brightness, i got to sleep, sleep. 0.25. I'm going to print out the brightness just so they can play along with me. So I'm going to say print 
your brightness is, and then comma bright, and that'll print the number. And I'm going to do that up here as well. So I'm going to say print your brightness is your IGHT. Okay. I want to hopefully I can see if I did those two the same. I think I need, I just like to have things kind of the same. All right. So that looks good. How do I save this? Control O. Do I want to save it as dim.py? Yes. So I just click enter and then Control X will write me out. What's the chance that this is going to run? What is the chance that I didn't make a mistake in there? You all were probably sitting there yelling at me watching my typos go by, but we'll find out here. So I'm going to. You have to run these as sudo because Pi does not have access to the GPIO pins, only the super user. So you have to run the program as super user so that you can get to those pins. Python and then dim.py. So let's see what happens. I didn't do a cleanup after the last runs, and so I might get some warnings about those pins, but it should it should be okay. Ooh, setup is not defined. GPIO setup. Oh, I see. Look at that. I put a comma. Okay, on GPIO setup. Why didn't you guys yell at me? I need to get a Skype going here or something so you guys can stop me when I make those mistakes. Okay, control O, enter, control X. Let's try to run it again. Okay. I think that it's running. Okay, why is it not doing anything? Because my initial brightness was set to zero. So let's see if I can go a little bit brighter. All eyes on the LEDs. Boom! Look at that. They came on. It said button 2 was pressed, and it said that the brightness was 2. Oh, I kind of left it on there long enough that it kind of counted 2 presses, so I better press it a little quicker. Okay, so now brightness 1 was pressed, and now I'm down to a brightness of 2. Okay, I'm down to a brightness of 1. I think you can still see those things are on, right? There you go. Let's do it this way. Okay. So you can see those things are on. So that's the lowest brightness. If I go below that, uh, it does, you can't really see because it, it's just going to do it as one. So I'll come back. The brightness is one. Now we're going to go to two. Okay. Brightness two. You could see that step up. Brightness four, brighter. Brightness eight, brighter. 16. Do you see how? This is not, this is going smoothly and easily. Okay, that's 32. That was a pretty big jump. And then 64. And then we're at full bright at 100. Let's step back down. 50, 25, 12, 6, 3, 1. Okay, and that's kind of as low as we're going to be able to go. And then we can come back up. Okay, and you see it getting brighter. Okay, all the way back up to full bright. Down. Okay, wow, that is pretty slick. That is just pretty darn slick. You know the one thing though, uh, I like that exponential scale, but the one thing is I feel like that I want more steps in there, but I still want it to be exponential. Well, how would I do that? Well, I could still have it be geometric, if you will, but instead of doubling every time, what if I said 1.25? So I want to go divide by 1.25, or I'm going to multiply by 1.25, and then what that should be is Control O, Enter Control X. That should, you know, kind of be more steps, you know, give me more options in there. It's still going to be smooth, but it's going to be more steps. So let's see what happens. Okay. Ooh, control. I messed something up. I put an extra. Oh, that was the decimal left from behind. So left from uh, before. Okay. Uh, there it is. Make sure I didn't do that on the other one. Okay, that looks good. Control O, Enter, Control X, and we are going to run it. Okay, starts out, nothing's on. So let's see if I can bring it up a little bit. Okay, that's very low. 
Okay, that's coming on up. Okay, do you see, you can see it getting brighter, but it's getting brighter more gradually. Yeah, I really like this a lot better. That's just perfect. Okay, you see how it's giving me a lot of steps in there. Okay, now I'm up at full brightness again. Let's see if I just hold the button down. It should sort of start clicking down here if I just hold it. So let's watch this. Okay, yeah, you see how it went down? and then I press it and you see how it's smoothly coming up let me turn the lights off I think you can see it better with the lights off okay all right here goes I'm gonna go down okay do you see how it's just smoothly dimming all the way down to the dimmest thing and then smoothly coming up it tends to kinda of saturate the camera it's much more dramatic sitting here and watching it okay so you can play around with those values and you can see what values you like. But at this point, you really have a very powerful tool set to use with your Raspberry Pi. You can do digital writes to the pen. You can simulate analog writes by doing a uh, PWM technique. And then you can do digital reads. So you have digital writes, kind of analog writes, and digital reads from those pens. That opens up a whole lot of capabilities. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you're liking these lessons, give me some feedback. Leave some comments. Give me a thumbs up. Share the videos. I will talk to you guys later.